Hi, I'm Dr. Hay. In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply the center of mass equation using the integration method to find the center of mass of this uniform rod. Now I've got a, a rod starting from x equals 0 going all the way to x equals L, so it's a length L long. Now we already know what the answer should be. If this is uniform mass distributed, that means that the center of mass is going to be at L over 2. But let's use the, the integration method to prove that. Here's the equation for center of mass in the x direction, which I've defined in this direction. Um, this m is the total mass. This is this distance x that goes out from the origin to the place where you have a tiny bit of mass dm. Now this little bit of mass dm is going to be integrated, that means summed, all the way from x equals 0 to x equals L. So by integrating, we can take into account all of the little dm's that make up this entire rod. We're summing up all of the little dm's. So we need something to plug in for x, and we need something to plug in for dm. And we need limits of integration. And if we're given the total mass, then we can plug in the total mass. If we're not given the total mass, then we need to find it. In this case, let's assume that we're given the total mass. First, we're going to define mass per length, lambda. Lambda is a mass per length. It's like a mass density, except not volume. It's not mass per volume, it's mass per length. OK, so mass per length. It's just a tiny amount of mass per length. So we're going to say dm over dx, a little bit of mass over a little bit of length. Now lambda is a little is a mass per length. If we know this has uniform mass density, then we can plug in the total mass over the total length. Now, I would not be able to do that if this was not uniformly distributed. If, now, I know that for the entire mass, the mass density should be the same for the whole mass, just as it would be for a little bit of mass. So for lambda, I can plug in the entire mass over the entire length. And now this dm is equal to the entire mass over the entire length times dx. Now this is something that I can integrate. x is something I know how to integrate, so I can put it into this equation. And doing the integral is going to sum up all of the places where I have dm. The limits of integration go from where I have mass, they represent where I have mass, all the way from 0 to L. Okay, I can take out the constants. X is not a constant. It changes with the little place where I'm measuring dm. That means it goes all the way along the rod. Okay, this is equal to I evaluated it from 0 to L, this result of the integral, and I got L squared over 2 multiplied by the original 1 over L, and I canceled out the mass, and now I've got L over 2, and that's what we expected for our center of mass of a uniformly mass distributed rod. Now let's discuss what would be different if this was not, if this mass was not uniformly distributed along the rod. That would be the case where lambda was not a constant throughout. For example, lambda might be a function of the distance. For example, maybe this rod is less dense, it's lighter here, and it's heavier over here. Maybe it varies with the distance x. That means that we could no longer make this substitution. That means I'd have to leave lambda in here. And so dm would be lambda dx. I'd have to leave it like that, just like up here. Now, I'd plug in my dm over here, so this would no longer be here. This would be a lambda. And that lambda is a function of x, and it would not be able to be taken out of the integral. 
it's got to stay inside the integral and be integrated because it contains an x and it wouldn't be able to be taken out. That's what would be different about this problem if this rod was not uniformly distributed mass. Now let's discuss what would be different about this problem if I was not given the total mass m. Well, I always know that the total mass is the sum of all of the little masses. And I do know what all of the little masses are. That's this function right here. So to find the total mass, the total mass, watch how I say this, is the sum of all of the little masses. The integral sign is literally a sum of all of the small masses. And that would be equal to lambda dx. So see how, now if I have a function of lambda, um, I could leave that inside the integral to be integrated. If I'm given a constant lambda, then I can uh, take it out of the integral. And now I can find the total mass, the part that goes in here, if I'm not given the total mass in the problem. 